Yo, what did you do, guys? Leon Muki here, and I'm back with another chapter of The Hero of Sangren Kagura. This is chapter two. In the last chapter, I basically went over on, well, Izuku's training as a shinobi, and also on how he's a lot closer with the guests and girls, Yumi, Shiki, Morikumo, Yozakura, and Miori as they all have feelings for Izuku, with Izuku starting his last year at Aldera Junior High, and that he's continually still training hard as a hero, uh, to become a hero and preparing for the, her the hero's entrance exam for UA, until he meets his idol, his hero, All Might, asking him for if he could become a hero, even without a quirk, with All Might telling him to give up on that dream. But he's but All Might sees the determination within Izuku. The same determination he once had when he got all one for all from Nana Shimura. With that, he feels like maybe he can trust him with one for all. So, with all that said, let's get into this, shall we guys? Chapter two Secrets for Secrets. As Izuku heads back home and relaxes a little bit before he heads to start his training, with Inko actually welcoming Izuku back home, with her saying, Welcome back, Izuku. Are you with saying, Yeah, I'm gonna train late, late tonight? Um, is dad with saying, No, he won't be back home, Izuku. He's already busy somewhere else right, for, right now. Saying, uh, I see, I see. As Hasashi has been, hasn't came back home to help train Izuku for a long time now. As again, mo sometimes his training is overseen by that of Hanzo. And occasionally spending time with Asuka, as always. But he always does his training solo. And always tries to figure out ways to, well have a stable shinobi barrier but even so he still focused more on his basic training such as sword play and shuriken that of developing shuriken throw which actually when he throws shuriken and kunai he's actually quite well good at it he always hits bullseyes all the time even even double, even stacking each shuriken and kunai with each other in each target. However, he he also is aware that some shinobi do do end up using that of firearms. Even his father, when he doesn't use his kasari gama, being his chain sickle, he al he always switches to his two well sub machine guns if he's ever surrounded or if he's ever disarmed with his main weapon. Izuku, on the other hand, prefers not to use guns, but he has developed, he would, but with the help of his father, he's developing a prototype weapon that will allow him to have a better accuracy when he uses his shuriken throws, which he, which a gun that allows him to shoot shuriken and kunai, he dubs it a shuriken launcher, but, at, but just that of a work in progress name though, which he still hasn't finished completely yet due to his training always taking priority. With that, the next day begins. As he heads back to Algera Junior High, currently now it's his, well, time for a break. And as he passed one of the other third year classes, he couldn't help but notice a couple of students actually laughing and joking. However, given his new sense of hearing, given his training, he can hear their conversation and their very words are somewhat despicable, 
one of the random students saying, stupid bitch, seriously, thinking she has the right to talk down to us, give it, what saying, tell me about it. Just because quirk, she should know her place being quirkless and all. But then Izuku's eyes whining, saying, quirkless? Wait, somebody else in this school is quirkless besides me? With then hearing another one of the students saying, seriously, did you really have to go that far with her? Having to basically pretend that you liked her just to humiliate her? With Izuku's eyes whining, but then the, uh, the guy saying, I mean, she had to know her place, thinking she had the right to like somebody like me when she's just a quirkless loser nobody. With then Izuku clenching his fist, and basically going up to them saying, hey, with one, with one of the guys saying, huh, what the, before he recognized who, he, who it is saying, uh, Midoriya, hey, how are you, what the hell was all that about, a quirkless person, with, say, with one of them saying, no, no, we weren't messing with you, anything like that, far from it, it's just that, with, the girl, with one of the girls saying, hey, actually, it was a quirkless girl trying to go after my boyfriend, that's all. You have nothing to worry about. We ain't doing anything wrong. We promise. Saying, all right then, how about this? Mess with that girl again, and I'll basically rip your heads off. Got it. With one of them saying, hey, you have... But then Izuku's eyes turned deadly serious, staring down as the guy that was about to talk back to him, saying, sure, definitely, we understand. Without that, he tells him, go, and don't let me catch your faces ever again, with, the, with all four of them soon running off. With then Izuku looking in the classroom, as he sees a girl that's actually drenched, that look her uniform being somewhat drenched, as her hair is wet to her clothes, and Izuku can also see through, see through it being her bra and panties. With then Izuku blushing, with then going to the girl as she's still laying on the ground as her wet hair is covering even her eyes. With then Izuku blushing, but basically removing his blush for a bit, knowing that she's actually, well, suffering right now. And Gra actually brings out one of his scrolls, which had that of a, well, spare towel when he goes out training, when he needs to remove his sweat. But then he actually tosses this towel to her with soon she notices it saying what are you wait you're hi my name is izuku midoriya it's a pleasure to meet you with soon she's saying izuku midoriya i've heard of you the one quirkless person that everybody fears in this school with then Izuku saying, yeah, I get that a lot. With soon, she's saying, huh, funny. As soon as they figure it out, as soon as they stop, start fearing you, they start coming after me. So what, you pity me now? Saying, I mean, sorry. I mean, I was just tired of people treating me like crap and I had to fight back somehow. Especially since everybody rallies behind Kachan. The black haired girl soon confused, saying, Kachan? Who the? It's like, oh, right. I'm pretty sure not a lot of people know. His name is Katsuki Bakugo. He used to be my childhood friend, but then he started bullying me a lot, so yeah. And yet you still call him that. Eh, I now call him that not out of respect as old friends, but now as more of an insult. So yeah, I don't really care. But I guess that mostly Bakugo. But nowadays, if I call him by Bakugo, he thinks it's more of an insult, thinking that I don't even take him seriously anymore if I'm calling him by his last name. With that, soon, she's saying, huh, that guy is a piece of work. And she started using the towel to dry her hair off. With then, her hair is now removed from her from her face, Izuku can now looks into her eyes as he goes back to blushing, as he sees her crimson eyes, as they're not pure red like how Bakugos are, but 
just more of a beautiful shade of crimson with soon she's saying why the heck are you blushing with then izuku saying uh no reason but then she looking down saying oh is it because of my wet clothes and that it's saying, well well there's that but it was uh i'm sorry but soon she gets confused and basically tilts her head to the right side saying you know for a guy that everybody fears, even though he's quirkless, you are one weird dude. With then Izuku saying, yeah, I get that a lot. Sorry. And you always apologize too. With then saying, I'm sorry, I'm just not good with girls, that's all. With then saying, wait, seriously? That's your reasoning? With Izuku nodding. With soon she's saying, ah, man. I swear. And as she stands up, but then she's saying, Mirai, with Izuku saying, huh? That's my name. My name is Mirai. It just would seem rude if I didn't introduce myself, that's all. With soon Izuku saying, oh, well, it's nice to meet you. Uh, soon she walks out of the classroom saying, hey, where are you going? With her saying, I'm going to the bathroom. Now that my clothes are wet, I now have to go and basically take them off. Sucks now that I don't have any change of clothes, fortunately. With soon, she clenching her fist, saying, Izuku saying, I got a few change of clothes if you like. With soon, she's saying, wait, you serious? Well, they're mostly workout clothes because I, well, working hard to go to the, go to UA, so saying, wait, you're serious? With Izu saying, serious what? I heard the rumor that you plan on going to UA. The national level school for the most prestigious heroes. Everyone thinks you're fucking crazy, Midoriya. You're quirkless. And yet, and yet I'm still going. So what? I don't care what people think. I'm still gonna work my butt off in the entrance exam, both in the written parts and practical portions. That's all that matters. I could give a damn about what anybody thinks. If a corpless person can't become a hero, I'll just prove them wrong. Simple as that. With hearing that, soon Mirai couldn't help but somewhat admire Izuku's determination. Some that want this stuttering and nervous kid that can't handle girls just soon just spoke his mind and passion just like that in just a flip of a switch. For that, she couldn't help but admire it. Somewhat like it, saying, all right, give me your clothes. With then Izuku saying, wait, what? You say you got spare clothes, right? Sure, I'll be wearing boys clothes, but at least it's better than just what? Then basically soak the entire damn time. With then Izuku saying, oh, right, uh, sure, hang on. As he goes through his bag, sees on his scroll where he puts his training uniform, opens it up and then pulls out his sweatpants and sweat and sweatshirt saying I hope it's not too big but saying no I should be able to wear it any rate I'll make sure to give it back to you tomorrow Midoriya saying hey don't worry about it you can keep it if you like with then a moment was quiet before soon Mirai and both Izuku blushing with then saying I mean I I didn't mean I just I, I was trying with soon saying you know what? You know, forget it. I'll just put this thing, this damn thing on and head to, just go. With soon, she running out of the classroom with then Izuku saying, uh, why do I suck when it talks to girls? In the hallway, as Mirai keeps walking to the women's restroom, she couldn't help but soon smile saying, he's so kind. Is it just because the both of us are both quirkless? That we both can relate to one another? Or is it that, well, he genuinely cares. He acts more like a hero than anyone else who thinks that they can become a hero in this school. <laughs> even the teachers don't even give a damn about me. And yet, he's the first one to actually care. After saying this, she soon smiles even more as she holds Izuku's training sweat uniform in her hands closer, closer to her flat chest. But saying, Izuku Midoriya, I really hope I can talk to you again. As Mirai continues walking, 
with hope in her heart. As for Izuku, the day comes to an end as he plans on heading to his training spots. But realizing that he doesn't have his training uniform, he decides to head back home. As soon he gets a message from his father, Asashi, as he says that he has some business to take care of. And the same thing goes for Hanzo, that they won't be able to train him today, that he can do self-training if he feels like it. But then Izuku sighing from this, with then actually soon realizing that he pulls out one of his old hero notebooks with then seeing all my, the number that All Might told him as he begins thinking, maybe I should, no, I might, but he did say, ah, damn it, what should I do? As Izuku is conflicted and wondering what he should do for, for training, as should he train by himself because be, do, even though he, there isn't really much he can teach himself without his sensei and father there to help him. With then soon, he's at a crosswalk. With then he hears tons of screaming and scurving everywhere. With then thinking, huh, must be an out of control car. Eh, no worries. Knowing the heroes, they'll probably stop it in no time. With that. Izuku continues walking. However, running past him, he sees a girl with that of brown hair, and she looks like an elementary school kid, around possibly 10 to 11 years old. With soon, he's as she runs past the well street. She Izuku soon noticed that the car is really is starting to get closer and closer, and realized that there are no heroes coming by. As then, soon after. He soon noticed that the girl that ran across the street is most likely going to get hit by it. But soon, Izuku one actually decided to act on his own and actually ran to the little girl. Within, he grabs her. He grabs her at last minute before she ever collided with the car. However, Izuku, his the left side of his arm being his. Even his shoulder was basically hit as he as he rolls to the other side of the street with a couple of people seeing this. With soon the little girl saying, "Ah, well, Mister, are you?" With soon Izuku actually wincing in pain quite a bit, saying, ah, "Don't worry, I'm fine. Are you okay?" With soon she actually nodding, saying, Thank you. You saved me. You're my hero. With then Izuku saying, I'm a hero? As he soon winces in pain, with then the entire upper half of his arm to his shoulder is completely broken right now. As then he lets go of her, as she's saying, Somebody, please help him. Please, somebody help him. With then so an ambulance finally comes. As for the car, it was soon stopped by a pro hero that came in time. However, unfortunately, another a life another life was taken by the out of control car. Even though Izuku saved a life of a little girl, he was unable to save another person. Wishing that he could have stopped the car, but if he did. He would have exposed himself as a shinobi, and his father always told him to never show his shinobi abilities, his shinobi strength. After all, they are not they are meant to stay in the shadows, both good and evil alike. With that, Izuku gets his arm checked out by the ambulance that came. As his arm is not it's a good thing that his arm is not completely broken, that he was able to at last minute that his arm didn't take the full blunt of the car's of the car's attack as soon as he pushed her out as soon as he knocked her out of the way with that he soon looks at the little girl as he now gets a better look at her as besides her brunette hair she also has that of red eyes and a black and a black ribbon across on the left side of her hair with then she couldn't help but smile with Sue, she walks up to Izuku 
still with his left arm still in a cast saying, thank you for saving me, mister. I wouldn't know what to say if what's easy saying, hey, as long as you're all right, that's all that matters. With, with soon, she's saying, thank you. You really are my hero. With Izuku blushing as somebody actually calling him a hero. With that, soon they two figures as it being a man and a woman that look like at least in their well late mid mid to late thirties. Actually calling out the little girl's name being Nozomi as saying "Mommy, Daddy" as what. As the man having that of white hair and the woman having that of brunette hair, such as her, like her daughter, with Izuku couldn't help but smile as the man, as the man holding his daughter Nozomi, saying, "Did you save?" Saying, "Yes, sir, I did save her, but I'm just glad that she's all right." Within one saying, "How can we repay you?" Within Izuku put putting his right hand up, saying. There, you have no need to repay me for anything. Just doing the right thing, that's all that matters. Well, soon, the man saying, you're a good kid. Are you planning to? Yes, I do plan on becoming a hero. So, and it only seems right for a hero to save people. I could care little about being compensated for my actions. Just knowing that she's okay, which is what matters. But soon, Izuku bows and then walks away. That, a couple of days have now passed with Izuku's, well, heroism being, caught, being now told on the news that Izuku Midori, a quirkless boy, ran into the streets to save, a little, to save a little girl. With many people in the school actually thinking that's actually her cool, while well, some are jealous and some don't even believe it. As for Bakugo, he gets jealous and even more angry at Izuku by, well, you can all guess, trying to explode his face and everything. And especially since Izuku didn't say Bakugo during the sludge villain attack because it never happened, well, he's still the arrogant piece of shit that looks down on everybody, especially Izuku as always, still trying to put him back into his place with every attempt failing. As always, with that, Izuku has, Izuku's cast finally removes. However, he still has to put bandages around his, well, arm. Given that he was given special medicine that will be able to heal his wounds a lot more faster, such as broken bones. However, he still needs to put bandages around his left arm, around the upper half of his left arm and shoulder, so the swelling could go down. As for Izuku's training, he... He's planning on heading out and probably tomorrow, just since after that, he'll be able to remove the bandages around his arm and shoulder. With soon, the doorbell rings with Izuku saying, I'll get it, mom. Don't need to get up. With soon, he opens the door. He sees a young woman, a, a woman that seems like the same age as him around that uh, 14 to 15 years old with Izuku saying, uh, can I help you? As he looks at her appearance with her having that of long white hair with that of, twi of long pigtails wrapped around in that of a bit in black bows with her red eyes and quite the, well, voluptuous figure as her boobs aren't that big, but still pretty big with that of a pretty wide hips though. With Izuku blushing, with then shaking his head, saying, uh, "Sorry, uh, can I help you?" But soon she's, but soon the girl places, puts her hands together in front of her. But soon she bowing to Izuku, saying, "Yes, my name is Yajayu, and I'm the sister of Nozomi, the girl you saved a couple days ago." With then Izuku's eyes widening as he starts to see the similarities, even remembering. Nozomi's family as soon she's saying oh oh yes I remember and you I'm uh can I ask why have you what well, soon she's saying I wish to thank you thank you for saving my little sister thank you for protecting her from that car for that 
I must really thank you for everything. With then Izuku saying, oh, is that it? <laughs> I really appreciate it was nothing. I was just, you're a hero. And in return, that makes you my hero as well. If Nozomi died, I don't know what I would do. With then Izuku saying, hey, don't think like that. All that matters is that she's okay and safe. You don't have to. Saying, I must repay you with anything. Name your price, especially since you are a shinobi, since your father and you are a shinobi after all, with then Izuku's eyes whining as he gets into a bow stance. How the hell do you know that? But soon, she's saying, because my family's also shinobis, both my parents. They're just average shinobis, though. What's saying, are you? We're a family of independent shinobis. We work, we work for neither good nor evil. With hearing that, Izuku actually let his stance down with soon sigh of relief, saying, sorry, sorry. I've never actually ran into other shinobis outside of my father and teachers and, well, a couple of childhood friends of mine. With Tsun saying, it's okay, you don't need to be so jumpy. I have no intention to hurt you or your family. I just really want to thank you and really wish to repay you in any way I can. Within Izuku Tsun, just smiling, saying, just knowing that I hear somebody thanking me and calling me a hero is payment enough. I'm really thankful. Thank you for coming all this way to see me just to thank me as Izuku bows his head as well with then she soon saying, but still I saying it's okay, you miss Yajayu. You don't have to do anything for me. I'm just thankful enough that somebody still, that somebody else sees me as their hero. With that, she soon saying, do you plan on becoming a shinobi or a hero? With then Izuku saying, I'm training as a shinobi, but I'm using my skills to become a hero. I want to become a hero more than anything. That was my dream. Uh, sorry, I guess it must be weird for a stranger telling his dream just out of nowhere, even though I know you asked, saying, no, it's okay. I'm just glad. Still, I really must thank you enough. Izuku Midoriya. If you ever have a favor of me, I, Yajo, will answer it no matter what. Just please, call me anytime you wish. With soon, he, she hands, oh, she gives Izuku her phone with her number on it. With then Izuku realizing what she's offering, with then he actually blushing quite a bit. With soon, he does the same by giving her his phone number as well. With that, they exchange contact information. Wetsun saying, it's a pleasure to meet you, Izuku Midoriya. Wetsun, she bowing and then leaving with Izuku saying, yeah. With then Izuku blushing quite a bit, saying, holy crap, I just exchanged numbers with a girl. I mean, sure, I do also have Asuka-chan and Hono-chan's number, but I haven't messaged Hono-chan in a long time. And Asuka-chan, I got her number mostly because her grandfather gave it to me. <laughs> With the suit, he begins really, really freaking out. As for Yajayu, she, as she walks from Izuku's apartment complex and looking at Izuku's number, putting, putting it under Izuku's name, however, on, at the end of putting his full name, she puts a heart and says hero. With soon, she's saying, thank you, Izuku from Adoria. For now on, I will dedicate my life, not just to Yozomi, but also to you, my hero. With that, soon, as for Izuku, the day as he now removes his cast, he soon now prepares for his training. However, he doesn't think of his shinobi training. He remembers me talking with All Might as he about the number that he gave him. With soon going to his notebook and then typing 
and then putting in the number in his phone. With soon it t- a couple rings within a voice saying, hello? With Izuku feeling like he knows the voice, but it doesn't have a, but can't put his finger to it saying, hello? Uh, All Might told me to contact this number to help me become a hero. So I saying, ah, so you're young Midoriya. It's good to hear you. It's good to hear you. Uh, my name is Toshinori Yagi. I'm a friend of All Might. Uh, he told, he said, I didn't think it would take you so long to call. I figured that you might call as soon as possible. Saying, sorry, sorry. I had a couple things and I also was hit by a, ah, I remember the call. You were hit by a car by saving somebody. Do it, and you did it. Did you? I didn't think about the fame or glory. I just saw a little girl who was about to get hit and saw some, and so you're in trouble. So I just ran out there and just to protect her. It was like my legs moved on their own without thinking. But then hearing this, Toshinori Yagi, AKA All Might, smiled as he sang, he truly is my successor. He truly is worthy of one for all. With soon, he looking at Mirio's file saying, sorry, young Mirio, you are a great candidate. And then he remembers the words of his former psychic, Sir Night Eye. Sorry, Mirai, but I found my successor. I found the person who who inherits one for all. And what I see worthy of the of my successor, truly. Within Toshinori saying, Young Midoriya, tell me, since you don't have school today, do you have any plans? But saying, uh, nah, not that I can think of. I don't think I have any plans. Hearing that, all, Toshinori saying, okay then, meet me at this location. It's a beach outside of Masafu, Tokyo. With saying, uh, okay, I'll do so. Thank you, Toshinori Yagi. With soon, Izuku hanged up. With Toshinori slash All Might, soon buffs up into hit into All Might. As soon he he gets he leaves his place and heads to Dagaba Beach. As for Izuku, he soon head he heads to Dagaba Beach as well. As he soon on his way there, as he gets off the trains. He soon see he soon hears a lot of commotion as it may be a bunch of villains about to attack somebody as he can hear tons of laughing and snickering with soon Izuku thinking don't villains ever learn their place with soon looking around as he realize there are no heroes here patrolling so it gives him the perfect time to pounce on innocent people and do whatever the hell they want sickens me well soon he disappears for a split second as he jumps onto a rooftop into one of the nearby alleys as he sees around five thugs who are who are a bunch of villains as they as soon he looks down he sees a girl a girl in regular street clothes however what stood out about her is that her hair was somewhat disheveled with and it was a pure Chris green, not as not as darkish, not a dark darkish green like Izuku's. With soon one of the thugs saying, "Hey, what are you doing out here, little lady? You shouldn't be here all alone. It's quite dangerous." With soon she not saying anything. With then one of the other thugs saying, "Hey, check out her body, though. I mean, look at those breasts. They're huge." Then the other, one of the other thugs saying, she's wearing a high school uniform. <laughs> well, guess it. Guess there's no point of proving that she isn't a teenager. With one, and then one of the other thugs saying, hey, I think I've seen this uniform before. I think she goes to Hebe Joe. But saying, Hebe Joe? You mean that, uh, you mean that national, you mean that school that basically is all girls, but also has, but also does the hero thing for them? Saying, yeah. I mean, this is gonna be great. With saying, <laughs> besides having a girl like this here, this is gonna be a lot of fun. With then Izuku clenching his fist, saying, "All right, I've heard enough." With soon the, gr- the green-haired girl, as 
soon opens her eyes. However, the guys see her eyes saying, What the? Hey, what the heck is this chick's quirk? What the fuck is with your eyes? Saying, it's all the same. How annoying. Well, I have a job to do by getting rid of with soon she was about to pull out a knife from her from her back of her skirt. But soon, one of the thugs getting knocked out by a kick from Izuku. With then one of them saying, What the hell? Who the without even taking without even hesitating, Izuku knocks each and every one of them out with single punches and kicks to each and area where it would knock them out in one single hit. With soon the girl's eyes began widening, saying, You took them all out for me. Saying, Oh, uh, yeah, I did. I mean, it wouldn't feel right for a girl. I didn't want to just sit by and do nothing. I mean, you were about to get attacked. Saying, I could have handled it myself, though. Saying, I, well, if you could, I'm sorry. But then again, I just didn't want to sit by and do nothing. When I see somebody about to get attacked and hurt. Saying, you're, why are you being nice to me? No one hasn't been nice to me in forever. With soon saying, I mean, do I need a reason to help somebody who, is, I mean, it's the duty of a hero, right? With soon, she tilts her head, but then Izuku looks into her eyes. With soon, he's kind of stunned for a bit. With soon, she, in our mind, in our mindscape, the girl's thinking, he's looked into my eyes. He's probably going to call me a freak or ugly. I didn't wish for this damn quirk of mine if it wasn't so useless after all. With Izuku saying, your eyes, they're stupid, ugly, freak, saying beautiful. With then the girl act, still having that of a bland and emotionless face begins blushing. With soon she begins feeling heat around her body. With then saying, I feel hot. Why is that? Saying, oh, uh, sorry. I didn't, I, I mean, I didn't mean what I said, but I, I, I'm so sorry. Look, I gotta go. Saying, what's your name, boy? Saying, oh, uh, I'm Izuku Midoriya. Yeah, sorry. I would ask for your name too, but I'm in a hurry. It, it, Izuku about to go as she grabs his arm. But then Izuku not even realizing, holy crap, she's fast. What's her quirk? But then the girl saying in a dead tone saying, Hikage. It's like, wait, what? My name, it's Hikage. That's who I am. With Izuku saying, oh, it's a pleasure to miss, meet you, Miss Hikage. Well, I gotta go. Later. With soon, she actually quite well surprise but part of her actually puts up that of a small smirk smile before she sticks out her tongue as it as it isn't a normal tongue but it's actually a snake tongue with soon saying izuku midoriya huh with then her phone ringing saying this is hikage with on the line being a female saying Hikage, did you take out the targets? With soon saying, uh, actually, no, I didn't. Saying, well, find them. I did find them, and I was about to take them out. However, they were already taken out before I could. Saying, wait, who took out them down? A boy by the name of Izuku Midoriya. Big green eyes, freckle, diamond-shaped freckles, and also messy green hair. Kind of, can't say. But he's pretty strong. Might be a shinobi though, if he's able to take him out without even breaking a sweat. Or it could be his quirk. I can't really say for sure, but he was pretty cute. With then on the other line, uh, the, the, the person was quiet. But then Hikake saying, uh, Miss Suzu, are you okay? Miss Suzu with then the person that was wearing that of samurai armor removes her helmet as she has that of 
dark purple hair and also blue eyes as well as she sang Izuku Midoriya, Midoriya, Hasashi Midoriya Sensei. He has to be his son. With soon gripping her left hand around the chair, which frustrated her quite a bit, but also some reason she couldn't help but tear up. With that, Izuku heads to Dagobah Beach on the way there with soon he sees a figure as it being all might with soon saying ah wait all might what are you doing here i thought mr toshinori was supposed to be here saying haha my boy he finally made it actually that's the thing about mr toshinori the person you talked on the phone with soon saying okay with then all might soon deflated to his nor to his small might form but then izuku saying what the wait there's no way you with then izuku within all might saying calm down young man calm down i can explain as all might slash toshinori yagi begins explaining that he is the number one hero the symbol of peace in japan and possibly the world with and also explain that his his real name is Toshinori Yagi, the, a hero who has inherited a quirk from his predecessor, Nana Shimura. The quirk known as One For All, as it gets stronger from user to user. With that, so All Might finish the ex, his explanation on to Izuku and telling him that, and that's why young Midoriya, I wish for you to be my successor. With then Izuku saying, wait, you want me to have your quirk? You want me to have your power? But why? I haven't done anything. That's where you're wrong. When I first met you, I thought of you as a quirkless boy who was in over your head, trying to become a hero, even though you didn't have a quirk. And yet, when I looked into your eyes and heard your determination, you were determined to become a hero more than anything. You would have done anything to become a hero. And because of that, I couldn't help but respect you. Respect your determination and will to move, to try and become a hero no matter what. So, and I wanted to test your determination, but when you didn't call, I was somewhat worried for the past couple of weeks or so with then, but then, when I also saw on the news on what you did, that you risked your life on saving that little girl without any, re and even asked for no reward in the process, even though you still get the credit, you didn't care about it. Heck, you said you had no interest in mi in having an interview with any, with any reporters, even saying that all you did was wanting to save that part, save that little girl. But your legs move on your own. When you told me that over the phone, I knew it. I knew for sure. You, young man, were meant to be my successor. You were destined to be a hero no matter what. Within hearing that, Izuku couldn't help but tear up. As for some reason, it's he couldn't help but not stop crying. For the first time, he wasn't wailing or wasn't screaming like he used to when he was a kid or when he used to cry like crazy. This is the first time that his tears just flow out without Izuku making any noise, not even sobbing or sniffling one bit. As he just stood there, standing, smiling, saying, thank you. Thank you, All Might. Thank you for telling me something I've been wanting to hear from my idol. First my father, then my master, then my best friend, and now you. You told everyone who have supported me this far. I finally, finally have a dream. People who believe in that dream now. So thank you. Thank you for everything, All Might. Thank you with that soon. Izuku wiping away all of his tears 
but then saying, if you're going to give me one for all, your quirk, then I need to tell you the truth as well. As the number one hero, you may know about this or may not, because it is a government secret that must be kept from the public as well. And some heroes are, are civilians after all, even though they can use their quirks in, a, in an emergency. With soon All Might saying, go ahead, young man, tell me. As Izuku began telling him that he is a shinobi, that all the training and everything that he's gone through, everything that he learned from his father, his teacher, his masters, his training with his friends and everything has have been spent, his training to become a hero has been spent as a shinobi. And because of that, he doesn't know if he's worthy. If he's going, if he, since he is a being of the shadows, that if one for all would work for somebody like him, would soon all might places his hand on Izuku's shoulder as he soon realized that Izuku has quite the toned body with then begins realizing, young man, young Midoriya, remove your shirt. But soon he's saying, wait, what? No, don't think of it like that. I need to see if your body is able to hold one for all right now. If that's the case, I should be able to give it to you as, as soon as possible now. With Izuku actually quite surprised, but soon removing his sweatshirt and his t-shirt, with soon saying, as I thought, you really do, your body, it, at, from the outside, with clothes on, you look like a scrawny boy. But when you remove your clothes, I can tell. You have quite a bit of muscle, but it's not too much muscle to the point on where you would need to always cunt where you seem too scrawny and thin. You, you have the perfect amount of muscle needed to move around and still to have enough muscle to have enough strength to lift things, even bigger than you. But Izuku's saying, well, it was the shinobi training that my father put me on. And not only that, he also told me that I still needed to be strong, but also still agile enough to move. So uh, he didn't put, so I didn't put on a lot of pounds and all that of muscle and everything. With Izuku scratching the back of his head and smiling with his eyes closed. But soon saying, that's why. I believe that you're worthy of one for all right here and now. Normally, you would need to pack on so much muscle and weight to hold your own, but if you told me about your shinobi training, maybe it should be enough to actually help you get a handle of one for all without having to constantly train your body to the point of to exhaustion. With soon Izuku saying, wait, really? You? Yes, I believe so. You, young Midoriya, you will be worthy of one for all. You will be ready for it. So until then, I will help you train to handle one for all with your shinobi abilities and strength. So, are you ready, young man? But soon, Izuki saying, hell yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready, All Might. I'm ready to live up to your expectations. Everyone else's as well. So, Let's do it. With Izuku having a confident and determined look on his face. With All Might is also ready and is happy to finally meet his true successor. However, on in Asakusa, Asuka finally joins Hanzo Academy's elite Shinobi's team with meeting with meeting her teacher her shinobi teacher, Kiria, and her two senpais. One, she's already have quite the, well, unfortunate familiars with being Kitsur Katsuragi, who constantly gropes her all the time, and her other senpai and, and fellow teammate, the leader of the Hanzo team, Ikaruga. As Asuka looks at, looks at everyone, she's soon ready, psyched, and nervous. However, when she thinks of Izuku, she couldn't help but also get excited and stoked for what's to come. However, 
somewhere else as it being in the city, looking around, jumping from building to building, a girl wearing also a hippie Joe uniform with that of black, having that of tan skin and also long brown hair, but in a ponytail. She soon looks from building a building and then looks at a certain apartment complex that she hasn't been to in a long time. And then looks at a nameplate with soon. She wants to knock at it, but no, but if she does, it's just going to cause trouble for a person that she knows in this house. As she puts her hand away and then walks away from the door, what soon saying, Izuku, sorry. I'm really sorry for not saying on where I am after all these years. Just, just promise me that you're still trying your best to become a hero. As this girl being Izuku's childhood best friend that hasn't spoke to him in such a long time, Homura. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I would love to read them. Also, in the next chapter, Izuku will be beginning the UA entrance exam full as his train is he's already ready for his training with All Might after all, given his shinobi training for years. So he's good. So I'm pretty sure he's gonna he has a good handle of one for all already. I mean he'll still break his bones and it still be will be out of control, but it won't be on the same severe level as always. So yeah. Also, I hope you guys like that I'm introducing each girl from the remaining members of the Hanzo squad and also the Crimson squad as well. And I know that some of you might be wondering that, well, y Yajayu. It was gonna be hard to get Yajayu to like Izuku, so I basically decided to, well, change her entire character or backstory entirely. Instead of her sister dying in a car accident where she becomes obsessed over Hibari, who looks just like her, her little sister, I decided to have Izuku save her sister and then her devote her life to, to Izuku because it only makes sense given how much of a sister complex this girl has. It only, her basically falling in love with the man who basically saved her sister only seems right. So I hope you liked it. If you have any, if you have any, well, comments on it, tell me in the comments below. Also, please like and subscribe and hit that bell notification to keep up to date with my other videos as well. Also, check out my Discord, gaming channel, main channel, and Patreon. All link in the description below. So with all that said, this is Leon Moki signing out. Later, guys, and take care, everyone.